my name is Saheli and I am the head of marketing for Erno Laszlo and I'm here today with Patricia, our chief brand officer. She's been with the brand for over 10 years and she is a gatekeeper and historian of our deep rich heritage. Well, thank you Saheli for the great introduction. To start out with some fun facts. Yeah. So Dr. Laszlo was a Hungarian born um, dermatologist and um, he was the first doctor brand that started over 100 or almost 100 years ago. Wow. In um, Hungary, Budapest, uh, 1927 is when he originated his first institute. And um, he was the first to introduce personalized skincare. Something we're really still proud of today, and we carry through um, the DNA of the brand as he empowered women. He was all about giving women the self-esteem and making sure that they not only feel good on the inside, but also on the outside. So tell me a little bit about, um, you know, how he got started. A great story, um, how he originated is one of his first clients was a Hungarian-Austrian um, princess called Stephanie, and she actually lacked self-esteem. So um, he was called to help and consult her and heal her skin. But with that, um, he actually also cured her lack of self-esteem. She was rejected by her husband and really withdrew from society as a result of that and um, wasn't comfortable you know, going out in public. And when he came to rescue her, he realized she didn't want to cover up her skin, but she really wanted to heal her skin. And he developed what you will be able to see at the Makeup Museum um, and also uh, we're bringing back for the Makeup Museum is Shake It, the first no makeup makeup. He was able to heal her skin and that really put him on the map. Okay. And uh, she was able to return to society and uh, live happily ever after. A lot about his history is his, fam his other famous clientele, so Marilyn Monroe, Audrey Hepburn. Can you share a little bit about you know how he moved to Hollywood and to the United States and got his start there? Yes, great. absolutely. So in the 30s, he was called by a lot of his friends that had relocated to Hollywood and had become studio owners. And uh, he went there in the 30s and was introduced to Greta Garbo, Audrey Hepburn, Eva Garner, uh, Cary Grant, um, um, so not limiting just to women, he also met a lot of actors. And uh, he was offered a role there to head up um, the makeup and design for one of the big studios and he actually decided and declined the job to follow his passion which is skincare and to really give the women um, beautiful skin rather than to covering it up. And with that he opened his first um, what we would call today a pop-up shop and he uh, moved to New York and opened his first location at the Suite of the Waldorf Astoria. So what happened at this pop-up shop in Waldorf Astoria? So some of those clients that we mentioned that um, were residing in New York um, would come there and would perceive, uh, would get their personalized um, skincare prescription by Dr. Laszlo. And then due to the success and the popularity, he decided to open his first institute. And okay. he opened on Fifth Avenue. Um, the building is still there today. It's on 53rd and 5th. And it became famously known as the House of Silence. You could only actually become a member if you were recommended by two existing members. And there, um, over the years, he had it, um, the, the famous actresses and a jet set would give each other the doorknob um, as they would walk in and out of um, his institute. So to name a few others, Marilyn Monroe became one of his devoted clientels, the Kennedys. Um, so he was, you know, popular all around by yeah. the jet set of the time. He went from, uh, you know, this exclusive membership model and then now we carry his products today. Um, so can you tell me a bit about that transition from, from going from, you know, the institute to, to retail? Yes, absolutely. So he, um, in the 60s, had become so popular that um, he wanted to, you know, give um, give his personalized prescriptions to a wider audience. So he developed a retail um, product assortment with the help and um, financial uh, support of uh, Doris Duke, which was a, a, you know, a quite known um, icon at the time. So she gave him the financial uh, funding to start his uh, retail business and he entered into Saks Fifth Avenue in the early 60s. With a full collection, he also brought on um, a designer he was, you know, a very creative businessman back then, and he was, um, you know, he brought someone on to help him design the packaging, and uh, that put him on the map. Mm -hmm.